comments aren't dead. If you think so, they're just over your head. Now, underground sites own those bites instead. We all read what the doomsayers said. I wish they'd give it a rest. They haven't killed nothing yet, just failed to remove some pests. Now, the best is yet to come from the Upper West Side. Our readers, they lean left, and they give us a test. The last things they rep are money and sex. Take both, they're still broke, so to find their hope. Our commenters write news fiends dreams, beg you to join their team, and take back what's ours, and resurrect the scene. A lot of them want to make executives bleed from their wallets and plead for the lives of their cash while they burn it to ash. Now, these rants, they play back all they have to believe. These hoods are crawling up our jeans to the sleeve. Give our commenters strength to defang what they all hate and pack it into an eighth they can smoke all day. <laughs> um, now, I, I should probably stop there, but I have, I have much more boring things for you today. Um, my name is uh, Bossy Adam. I am the community editor, uh, yes, community editor for the New York Times. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about how we approach community and based on our research and what we've learned, how we think the community business is going to uh, evolve over the next few years, uh, at least for a major news, or news organization like us. So, here's how we operate. Now, this is not a model that would work for everyone, uh, needless to say. Uh, but I think it can serve as an example for the industry's changing direction as opposed to how the internet's comment, internet comments business has worked in the past. Uh, so our, the, for a little bit of background, uh, the Times Community Desk started out pretty late in the comments game. It grew out of the now defunct Times forums, which honestly I've not even seen a screenshot of. Uh, but when we started doing comments, we had a distinct advantage. We, when we started uh, about you know, uh, eight years ago, basically every comment section on a non-community oriented news site was a complete disaster, uh, as, as many of you know. Uh, and the response was, something akin to uh, let the weird guy in the corner deal with that. I, we're getting some page views, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, and I, I promise I was never told this myself because I'm not weird. Uh, so uh, so uh, 11,000 comments a day moderated manually uh, by 14 people, uh, a bunch of them full time, comments on less than a tenth of our assets, so a limited product here. So the next question is, why all the trouble? So uh, go back a little bit more. Uh, imagine you're the New York Times, right? Uh, just about, uh, about, about eight years ago, okay? So back then, most of the web people at the time sat about six floors, sat about six floors away from everything else, kind of you know, on a separate floor, kind of huddled together for warmth or something, I don't know. Uh, and, and so we, what, we, what you wanted to do at that point, if you're on, you know, the ninth floor, was uh, you want to tell the leadership at the New York Times who, you know, right now it's a really forward-thinking bunch, but back then, uh, perhaps amongst the crustiest, right? And you want to say, oh, hey, uh, you know that thing uh, where everybody on the bottom of other sites where everybody calls each other like Fat Hitler or whatever. Uh, <laughs> let's put one of those on our site, right? Huh? You know, uh, and to, to the credit, to the credit of, uh, of, of the Times, even at the time, they allowed it. Now, granted, they allowed it on a link that went off to a separate page, right? The, the overflow page from back in the day. Uh, just a little link next to the share tools, but it was there. And to survive at the Times, really almost in a, in a Darwinian sense, uh, we were forced to create something that, you know, when I look at it now, seems pretty remarkable. 
so at the times, we make money on our comments. Uh, large percentage of subscribers comment every month. Most of our subscribers think it's an important part of the times. Uh, helps with the subscription business and uh, getting people to register to the site as opposed to subscribe to the site has a discrete monetary value and comments are a big driver. Being inspired by a comment to subscribe, to register is a big deal, big money maker, all right? So as I said before, we were forced to create something remarkable. Uh, and that's a comment section that had much the same ethic as a letters to the editor page. Now, I've probably said it a million times, and I'm sure I stole it from somebody else, uh, but the best communities always seem to work as microcosms of the larger site that they're on. So in our case, our readers expect everything we publish to be literate and urbane, perhaps even a slight bit snooty, and we have a comment section that reflects that, and that's why our readers love it. So this is directly from, a paraphrase directly from our FAQ when we ask folk uh, the question, what kind of comments are you looking for, the first question. So right now, the way our system works is basically uh, we go to news meetings, me or my deputy, we go to a news meeting, we'll set priorities about the day. We'll listen to the news. We'll say, OK, what's a good comment story? What's not? What can we handle? What's the projected volume of these stories? How can we get to somewhere around 11,000 without breaking our backs, causing our moderators to go crazy, and giving them 14,000 comments in a day, right? Um, so we set those priorities. And then as the stories come out, we haggle about who should moderate them over Slack. And uh, readers, once we approve the comments, readers can flag them, and we review them, and occasionally we make mistakes. Obviously, it's a uh, few people doing uh, 11,000 a day. There'll be a few mistakes. Uh, typically, uh, we run our main operation, our news side of our site is run from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m., and then overnight, we, uh, we've got, we've, we work with a contractor to do some uh, uh, late night opinion stuff. So right now, our main editorial product is a highly curated uh, Cliff Notes version of the comment section. That's really meant to, uh, it's built to inspire you or touch your heart or to annoy you. It's about getting a reaction. So this, our strategy, I think the most, one of the most interesting things about our strategy is that it's not just about the folks posting comments. It's actually very little about the people actually posting the comments. Our strategy is about serving the people who read our comments. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty unusual system, uh, to say the least. A lot of readers, uh, especially the ones who are the angriest about, uh, you know, everything, uh, typically have a, a hair trigger censorship alarm. You get rid of the comment, you're censoring me. Now, I personally uh, enjoy, I delight in explaining the Constitution to people, you know, the government bridging, you, we're not the government, you know. But if a news organization could bridge your right to free speech, you, you never had it in the first place. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. But when it comes to news, the under, the undergirding of our philosophy is that it's an insult when to put the well-considered remarks of some folks next to a bunch of inflammatory garbage that's designed purely to provoke a negative response. So, you know, obviously our moderation system, very far from perfect, but that's, that's what we aspire to. That's what we strive for right now. Uh, so, our strategy right now in serving the comment readers rather than the comment writers means that the writers also have a responsibility to contribute to our news report. Uh, you can see how this simplifies things and kind of makes our moderation possible, kind of sets the general guidelines, you know. Insulting fellow contributors adds nothing to the news, so that's out. 
conspiracy theories or off-topic things or, or any other, it's all fine, but you've got to make, try to make a case. You've got to try to justify it directly based on the article you're talking about. And we don't publish news in all capital letters, so we're not going to post comments in all capital letters, right? Just simple, simple things like that, right? So all the great results we, we've seen so far in our comment section, especially accelerating lately, we see in our survey data, every single month we have over 4 million comment recommendations made. 4 million likes on comments. And, for, and this is on a system that's on less than a tenth of our content, right? So for us, that, that kind of, you know, it helps underlie the point that for us, our key metric isn't comments posted. It's the number of recommendations posted per, number of, recomm number of recommendations made per comment, right? So that number will tell us how efficient each unit of our work is. The philosophy here being that there's less use in 5,000 comments that 3,000 additional people found helpful than in 500 comments that 10,000 people found useful and gave recommends to. Uh, you know, so for us, that works because most people come to the Times to read, not to write. Uh, and so we want to continue to treat our, our commenters as a little bit of a separate category of specialized content providers and have a really distinct focus on the people who are going to be reading the comments. And the commenters themselves uh, seem to uh, appreciate that approach as well because they're really heard, they're really uh, they're popular amongst their community. They're, 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 they're name brands, essentially. So one thing to keep in mind is that what we're doing right now, this is for a system that does not offer very many features. There are no profiles, no use of profiles. We have long moderation wait times. Sometimes you may wait hours, it is true. And there is no search. The only record of your comment uh, is a string of emails we gave you. We're, all we're doing right now, all we're capable of doing at this moment is providing a list of well-curated opinions on a very limited number of stories, and it's profitable for us. So that said, uh, to, really, uh, to really capture the value that's locked up here amongst the small number of stories I just talked about. Uh, what works now and what works in the past is not going to work in the future. So I think this is a hugely important point for us here. Everybody, all demographics agree, Times comments are higher quality and less angry based on our survey, based on our internal survey data, all right? Uh, and commenters appreciate a simple experience. We've asked them about annotation. They aren't, they aren't very down with it. That might differ on other sites, but at least for our readers, they're not, su they're not super into it. So I think, though, on this, on this whole point, this is really the key takeaway. Young readers are the only demographic to say they read comments to compare their opinions with others rather than to add value to the story. That is a huge generational shift for us. Previous generations of Times readers are coming to, to add, primarily to add something to our news report. And that is a huge motivation for younger readers too. But you see, as the readers get younger, more and more it ticks up. Help me compare my opinions with others over adding value to a story. And this next point is a bit less important because you don't need a lot of people posting comments. But I think it's an incredibly instructive point. Young readers post comments to express themselves rather than to, more than, sorry, shouldn't be rather, should be more than, like, to contribute to a topic. So all of that kind of leads us at the times to this big question. How do we scale, how do we build communities to scale if readers are moving towards self-interest and away from serving their peers? For us, this is an especially complicated question, as you can imagine, because here we are holding up all of the comments for review, saying, well, it's because this is your contribution to our report. So we're working on, on a project 
to resolve that issue will be rolling out a, a, a bit later in the year to really take advantage of new sentiment analysis technologies. But for our purposes today, I think that this is the key, this is, this is the opportunity. The next phase in community as we see it, based on our survey data, based on talking to our readers, based on just what's worked for us, is immersion, right? It's the slow and consistent and inexorable move toward a singularity between our readers and our report. Now, our readers' opinions have become, an incre have become part of an increasing number of pieces, which you know, I won't list them, but our UGC journalism, we do it constantly, we do it more and more often. So we, what we're working on right now is ramping up that effort, building it into the platform, so you can eventually get to the point where those opinions and New York Times journalism can really talk to each other in a, a seamless way. So just to give you know, basic examples of the templates being used right now, uh, or in that we're working on developing right now, are tracking how individuals' opinions evolve over time in comments, right? So social media is great at saying, hey, this is how overall how people evolved. But with communities, you can get a discrete group of people talking to each other. You can track one person, all those interactions, and say, what is the point where their mind was changed? You have evidence of that. That's a big deal. Uh, another, you know, you can do large-scale versions of simple things, like reporting on great comments within the arguments, or highlighting personal stories, finding ways to make that modular and simple, creating short-form versions of reactions from professionals, people who are into the story, really answering the question right away, how did people react to this story, and training your readers to say, I'm one click away from that, and I'm not just, it's not gonna be a block of text, it's going to be something that I can digest fairly quickly, right? So, So for, I think for all of our organizations going forward, we've got to understand, you know, and I, I heard this in a previous talk, you can, use, you can use money to hire someone or build something or, co or a comment system, or you can use money to hire somebody to moderate, but you can't just make a reader want to provide you with quality content that you can make serious use of. Instead, we have to take the sum of everything that we've created within our product, so in our case, a crowd of the best journalists you can find, or the funniest, or most contrarian, or whatever it is that justifies your existence, and ask your readers, honestly ask them, how would you like to bring a face into the crowd? Now, now if we can do that, and chip away at this distinction between broadcaster and receiver that we have right now, that's over time by finding curated, high-quality experiences where everyone's working from the same base of knowledge, which is our original content, we, as an industry, can secure our, a permanent place for ourselves no matter what the future trends of, of social media pretend. So that all sounds great, right? It's, uh, it's, it's very inspiring, I know. Uh, but the key thing from one of my previous slides that I didn't, I didn't bring up, most young people who read comments, who, most young people who never read comments never read comments because they only care what the reporter has to say. That's, that's what the survey data says. This is a bigger percentage than any other demographic. Now, to a certain extent, we've poisoned a generation to comment sections. But I also see that as a call to action. If you only care about what I have to say, that's not that good, because I can only say so many things before I go to bed, basically. But you can read a lot more things than I can say. So how can I, the question we're asking ourselves, and I think all of us need to ask is, how can I put folks in a position to not just to contribute, but to contribute value? And I think that's what the next generation of a comment section is all about. How can you be get in a position to contribute value? So. So putting you in a position uniquely based on the content and who you are to really be able to help people and to also promote your ideas rather than just offer rote blocks of text to people. 
So I think that's where we've got to go. And uh, thanks so much for having me. I'm exactly out of time. That's amazing. <laughs> thanks so much. <laughs>